I know gas is expensive, but I could have given you a ride. Elevator's broken. It was fine when I came up from admitting. Dana Miller, the cancer researcher, spontaneous pneumothorax. Oh, for a thin file. She just got admitted. Lots of things can cause pneumothorax. Why don't we let eight or ten other doctors rule out the boring stuff? We want to take this case. She's maybe five or ten years away from curing retinoblastoma. Which would make this case attractive to anyone who has some vested interest in people curing the incurable. She hasn't suffered from COPD. She doesn't smoke. She hasn't been scuba diving. O2 sats are low even after chest tube insertion. Pneumothorax could be secondary to a bunch of things. Cystic fibrosis, lung cancer. Or to be slightly more optimistic, late onset asthma triggered by an unknown allergen. We have a case. Did you just get to work? To mind trouble? Did you take the elevators up? Yes. So, steroids for asthma? Yeah. There was CT looking for hyperinflation to confirm. I thought my hospital was high tech. I'd have to wait all day for a CT. Dr. House gets a few perks. He has his own scanner? No. Just very loose interpretations of hospital procedure. I appreciate the extra effort, but... Our gift to society. We want to get you back to work as soon as possible. Well, I'm not working. At least not as a doctor. I quit. I left eight months ago. You mean like a sabbatical? I had a uterine myoma. Benign, but it ruptured and I needed emergency surgery. I was lying there on the table thinking, I can't die now. I haven't been happy yet. Couldn't you just buy an overpriced German sports car or have an affair? My sports car is doing what I want, when I want. Right now, I'm learning how to run a kitchen from one of the best chefs in New York. You're washing pots and smashing garlic. Smashing garlic makes me happy. Before that, it was eight years studying, 12 years in that lab. It's always what I was supposed to do, never what I wanted to do. We need a biopsy to confirm. You need an open lung biopsy to confirm pulmonary fibrosis. That's invasive surgery. I'd be out of commission for weeks. No offense, but you're not working. What does it matter if you spend a little time in bed? Not working doesn't mean I don't have places to go. I've got my book group, piano lessons, cooking classes. They make me happy. A warm apple fritter makes me happy. It doesn't fulfill me as a person. And working here does? If it didn't, I'd have found a way to go back to tucking tummies. Well, good for you. If your job fulfills you and makes you happy, that's rare. I didn't say I was happy. I loved being a plastic surgeon. The money, the lifestyle. And in a lot of ways, this job stinks. I'm making five bucks. I'm always annoyed. But... You can look yourself in the mirror and think, I did something worthwhile today. Exactly. Well, that's important. And I do miss that, but... It just wasn't enough anymore. That doesn't feel right. Sit up. Ow. Oh, that's weird. What is it, ascites? Ow! Your belly's full of blood. First, her lung deflates like me after a cold shower. Now her liver starts to bleed like me after a... You okay? Great. Just practicing my clown college audition. Someone set a tripwire. We were with the patient the whole time. We were in the GRC. Lung, liver, go. Shouldn't you be obsessing over who did this to you? Nope. Anybody bother MRIing our patient's liver for tumors? Uh, no tumors, no cysts, no clear etiology. If you're not obsessing, you must have already figured it out. Yes. So I'm obsessing about why you're not obsessing about why our patient's liver suddenly sprang a leak. It's a tiny spot on the caudate lobe. Could be a granuloma. It rose into the hepatic artery, causes the bleed. What caused the granuloma? Blastomycosis. Could have been asymptomatic for months. It hits her lungs, we give her steroids, it blossoms and attacks her liver. Get a piece of her lungs, stick it under a black light. If it glows, sick children who need her souffles can breathe easier. Borman. 
Again? You have a problem. I told you, I didn't. Then you really have a problem. Well, she turned her head to look at the MRI, and she's losing her peripheral vision. Because she turned her head. I'm happy for you. A love so deep, you're ready to chuck your medical license to give her powerful, unproven drugs with dangerous side effects. I don't want to make any assumptions about your feelings for me, but I do have a birthday coming up. Dr. Miller, I doubt if you'll remember me. James Wilson, right? Chicago, the Adna Carcinoma Conference. Impressive. You want some cortisone for that itch? Liver failure. Itching is one of the lovely side effects. Why did you quit? Well, the worst thing is, is now every time I get sick, I have to listen to a dozen people judge me. Do you want me to congratulate you? I've got four kids in Pedunk right now who are gonna die. Three of them within a year, the other in a few days, probably. Breakthroughs will happen. With or without me, someone will find the answer. Maybe. <laughs> I'm in the trenches. I'm, I'm doing triage as best I can. You had the chance to end the war. How is someone like me supposed to keep fighting when someone like you just walked away? When I left my job, a lot of people were furious with me. It was easier to be angry than to admit they weren't happy, that they were stuck in a rut somewhere in their lives, unable to move forward. What's your rut? Patient's MRI was negative. No tumors, no lesions. Where's your cane? Where are your coworkers? I paged them. It'd still be psychogenic. Technically, it can't still be that because it never could be that. She scratched through her skull while she was sleeping, unless she was having a dream about fleas. Oh, hey, funny you should drop by. We were just talking about this patient of ours. Tell him the part about where two of her doctors don't show up. Where are you going? Polyneuropathy. If it's not in the brain, it's in the nerves. Explains the itching, the lungs, the liver. Shock the affected area, reboot the nerves, she'll be fine. Hang up, he's here. We've been paging you all night. By all means, let's discuss the failed attempts to contact me, not the reason behind them. Patient started experiencing spinal shocks before the machine was turned on. Lermite sign. Shocks without shock, an itch that won't stop. She needs Dr. Seuss. Lermite sign could mean Bichette's B12 deficiency. No sores, no anemia. Where's Foreman? No idea. Could be another demyelinating disease. Why are you asking about Foreman and not 13? Because both questions are bound to have the same answer. Ebony and Ivory are joined near the hip. Forget the brain, look lower. Spinal tumor wouldn't explain the liver or the lungs. But an aggressive spinal hemangioma could. Go find it. What's going on with everyone today? It involves House, Foreman, and 13, which means it's either dumb, dangerous, or tragic, or a combination. I'm embracing my ignorance. House was right about the hemangioma. Looks fixable. What's that? He man Jomas travels solo. This thing's brought a friend. Messes in her lungs and spine, one in her pericardium. They're everywhere. Classic for a mesothelioma. It metastasizes outward to the spine and muscles. Ah, the irony of it. Maybe she wouldn't be sick at all if some other lazy cancer researcher hadn't gone home early. Where are Foreman and 13? Shouldn't you be saying those weren't there when we scanned her two days ago? Mesothelioma shouldn't grow this fast. Good rephrasing. And Wilson do a biopsy to confirm. No. Something weird is going on. It involves our colleagues. We should know. You want us to treat the patient? Tell us what's going on. Actually, all he needs us to do is tell Wilson to do something. So... You always blab to watch people react. So not blabbing means you don't want us to react, which can't be good. Is 13's headache not just a headache? If I check with admitting, am I gonna find her name? Little pinch.
I'm sorry about the other day. I unloaded on you, and... You're not sorry. You feel bad because mesothelioma means I'm dying. You're a good person. I appreciate the sentiment. I'm not apologizing because you're dying. I'm apologizing because you were right. I am stuck. My girlfriend died. She was the only person I've loved for a long time, and... I'm still living in her apartment. I'm surrounded by her things. I've left it all exactly where it was. <laughs> I don't know how to get unstuck. The only wrong thing is to do nothing. It's not supposed to happen. Mesothelioma doesn't bleed. So what causes masses that do bleed? AVN secondary to schistosomiasis. She'd be crawling with worms, we'd have noticed it. Gorm's disease and Kassebach merit can both cause super aggressive vascular tumors. The patient's heart just stopped. So what causes that? Cardiac tamponade. She's bleeding into her pericardium, smothering her heart. Syringe. BP is going back up. It's working. No, it's not. Look. We're transfusing platelets, FFP, everything to try to keep her stable, but we can barely keep up with the blood loss. At this rate, she could be dead by the end of the day. We need to resect the vascular tumors, stop the bleeding. Too late. No surgeon's gonna touch her now. Should we give up? Just let her bleed out? Don't be silly. You know what that would do to our malpractice insurance rates? We'd go on the offensive, cut off the invading army's supply line. You're talking about embolization? Cut off the arteries that feed blood to the tumor as they wither and die. Start with the ones in her lungs. If they get any bigger, she's gonna have a hard time breathing. So she'll have a hard time telling us she's dead. You can't kill the tumors without also killing healthy tissue. If we wipe out three quarters of her lungs... Let's hope that running marathons wasn't on her happy list. House, if you're looking for returnable bottles, Cotton's already cleaned it out. Damn. Oh, well. Is the only thing I'm gonna get out of this is a diagnosis. So the nurses gave her pads instead of tampons. Is that diagnostically relevant? The fact that the nurses had to give her anything is she's bleeding from her uterus. Women do that. It's perfectly natural, not scary at all. She's menstruating and she's bleeding everywhere. There's about a three or four in 28 chance it's a coincidence, which leaves a much bigger chance that the diagnosis is ectopic endometriosis. She had a myoma eight months ago. Surgeons cut through her uterine wall. Every cut of the scalpel could have sent endometrial cells spilling out into her bloodstream. Some of them took up residence in her lungs, some in her liver, some in her spine. Like all horny little cells, they went forth and multiplied until they reached a critical mass. In the days leading up to her next period, when her uterus is supposed to swell, everything swelled. Then when her uterus was supposed to bleed, everything bled. Yes, ladies. I am blaming her period. Granted, it's the worst period ever. Although, frankly, not by all that much. Cut out the masses, she'll be fine. Can't do surgery until her cycle's over and she stops bleeding. Well, let's hope she can hold out till then. In the meantime, get her a pint of cookie dough ice cream and a DVD of Beaches. 